So yeah, we're going to talk about dimensional analysis today. Um, the first thing we're going to cover is the natural laws behind dimensional analysis. We'll then take a look at the principle of dimensional homogeneity. Okay. I'll talk about what we mean by fundamental dimensions. Okay, and then we're going to, you know, why are we doing dimensional analysis? How does it apply to fluids? Okay. Um, we'll discover what the Reynolds number is and how we derive that. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to go through a worked example of, of applying dimensional analysis. And if we've got time at the end, we'll do some other worked examples from the tutorial sheet. Okay. If we've got time at the end. Okay, so the first thing is natural laws. And basically, laws are described um, from first principles, okay? Generally, um, something like Newton's second law, we use that to derive various um, equations relating to real systems, okay? And these are determined what's called analytically. So we're taking, you know, first principles, you know, for example, energy or, law, or Newton's law or something like that, and then from there we derive various <coughs> systems. Bernoulli's equation is derived from the, what we know about energy in the fluid, okay? Now, the thing is, that's fine if the system is simple and well understood. But often, with very complex processes, and fluids is, can be, you know, certain areas of fluids are complex processes, we don't really know um, how to derive, you know, such a system from first principles, okay? And so what we have to do, um, you know, it's difficult to describe from first principles, and often these sort of systems are also not necessarily well understood. They're still sort of being discovered in a sense. Okay, so that's another um, type of complex process. And lastly, um, we have to determine these laws experimentally. Okay, and so as opposed to uh, determining a law uh, analytically from first principles, okay, we have to do some experiments, basing you know basing those experiments on the real system, and then try and determine laws from the experiments. Okay. Now, to do that, um, we can use dimensional analysis, okay? And that can help determine these relationships. And so that's what, we, you know, that's the, the sort of the reasoning behind uh, dimensional analysis in general. Okay, now with dimensional analysis, there's this uh, principle called the principle of dimensional homogeneity, okay? And that simply says that every term in an equation, okay, <coughs> describing a real physical process must be dimensionally the same when expressed in terms of fundamental dimensions, okay? So essentially, the, the, um, the dimensions on one side of the equation must be the same as the dimensions on the other side of the equation, okay? They must match up, otherwise your, um, the, your, your relationship that you're developing um, isn't correct, okay? And so... Let's look an at an example, okay, energy and work, okay. Um, you've probably not covered this in great detail at a, a, um, a university yet because I'm going to be teaching it next semester. But you may have covered it in school, okay, and it's very simple. In the, um, you have an object, here's my object, okay, I apply a force to the object, okay, I apply a force to the object and it moves, okay. Now, essentially, that force being applied, that's, I'm doing work on the object by moving it, okay. Okay, and that affects the energy inside the object in terms of its potential energy and its kinetic energy. They both change. Okay? So the force applied to the body, or the work that I do to the body, affects the kinetic and the potential energy. And we can write this mathematically um, with, a, with an equation. Okay? And the work done is the force times the distance that's moved. The, uh, the potential energy, um, we covered this last week, one half mc squared. Okay? And then the potential energy is obviously mg times the height, or times by z. Okay, so we have these equations. Fs, which is the force times the distance, one-half mv mc squared, which is our kinetic energy, and mgz, which is our potential energy. And you can add these up together, and you get this equation. Now, is this dimension, is, does this follow the principle of dimensional t? Okay, well, we can look at them. Let's look at the units for um, each of these terms. We've got... Obviously, the first term, which is the work done, which is force times distance. Now, the units of force are newtons, and the units for distance, obviously, are meters, okay? 
And so and newtons we know as mass times acceleration. And so we can say that newtons are kilograms times by meters per second squared. And obviously we're then multiplying that by meters to get the distance. So our total units for work, okay, are kilogram meters squared per second squared. Okay? So these, these things in the square brackets are the units of the, each of the terms. Okay? So our, our work done has the units of kilograms meters squared per second squared. <coughs> What about kinetic energy? Well, we have one half times the mass times the velocity squared. Okay, so we have kilograms times by meters per second, and those meters per second are squared. And so again, we end up with the same units, kilograms meters squared per second squared. Okay, what about potential energy? Well, we have mass times acceleration, mg, okay, times by a distance, in, uh, which is z, okay, and again, that's measured in meters. And so here we've got kilograms times by meters per second squared, like a, like a Newton, okay, mg is also a force, and then we multiply that by a distance in, in meters, okay, and so again we end up with the same units, kilograms meters squared per second squared. So this equation follows the principle of dimensional homogeneity. On one side of the equation, fs, we've got the units of kilograms meters squared per second squared, and on the other side, both of those terms also have the same units as, as the work done. And so each, each term in the equation has the same fundamental units, okay? So why have I highlighted fundamental? Well, essentially, there are some fundamental dimensions, okay, that we, we look at. And it's actually the unit of measurement is unimportant. So it doesn't matter whether you're talking about metres, uh, measuring something in miles or feet or even furlongs, okay? It doesn't matter, but all of those things are related to length, okay? And so we only consider the dimension, okay? And so there are essentially six fundamental dimensions. <coughs> the first one, let's call that length, and we denote that with the symbol L for length, okay? The SI unit of length we all know is meter, okay? And the, obviously the unit abbreviation for meter is M. Now with mass... We denote that with the symbol M, okay? And the, obviously the SI unit for mass is kilogram, and we denote kilograms with kgs. We also have time. That's a fundamental dimension, okay? We denote that with the letter T. Obviously the SI unit for time is seconds, and we denote seconds with S. And then there are three more, which are called auxiliary um, dimensions, um, and I'll list them here. Um, we've got temperature, that's capital, this symbol here um, is capital theta, this symbol here, okay? And the SI unit for temperature is Kelvin, and we denote Kelvin with the letter K. We also have electrical current, which is I, okay, and that's measured in amperes. And lastly, we've got this thing called luminous intensity, which we denote by J, and that's measured in candela, Okay? Now, with fluids, we're only going to actually deal with the first three of these, okay? Um, length, mass, and time. Because everything, essentially everything else can be derived from these things. And so every other physical quantity can be expressed in terms of length, <coughs> mass, and time. Okay, all the other <coughs> units that you can think of, newtons, um, you know, velocity, or all these sort of things, essentially are um, derived from length, mass, and time. Okay, so all other quantities are derived units. And for, exa for example, we've got velocity here. Okay, well, velocity we know is change of displacement divided by time. Okay, and obviously displacement, we're talking about length, and time, we're talking about time. And so the, the dimensions of velocity are L, t to the power of minus 1, okay? We've got length divided by time, so L, t to the minus 1, okay? So that's the dimensions of velocity. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about miles per hour or meters per second or millimeters per hour or whatever, it's going to be length divided by time, so L, t to the minus 1. Similarly, acceleration, well, that's the change in velocity divided by time, okay? And so that's length divided by time squared. And so we have L, T to the minus 2. 
What about force? Well, force we know is mass times acceleration from Newton's second law. Okay, and so that's going to be mass times by length divided by time squared. And so we end up with m l t to the power of minus 2. And so the last row in this, in this table represents the dimensions of each of those terms. And these are the derived dimensions, essentially. They're, not, they're, they're derived from the fundamental dimensions of mass, of length, and time. And on page 48 of your notes, okay, if you look in your notes on page 48, you have a table of dimensions for a bunch of derived things. So we've got on here things like um, area. Obviously, that's going to be length squared. Okay, we've got pressure. Well, pressure we know is a force divided by an area. Okay, um, and various other various other things to do. You know, with all the different der derived expressions. And this table will be useful when you're doing your um, tutorial sheets. But we'll come on to how how we can apply that shortly. <coughs>